we are living in a nested reality, that this universe is just one of many in a multiverse, but that even within the multiverse, universes can be nested, meaning we may not be at base reality, that we are in this universe that's created potentially, potentially by an ancestor civilization, just as we are now creating our own ancestor civilizations in the video games like The Sims or No Man's Sky. When The Sims get AI injected into them, which is going to happen now, they're going to become conscious. And these, these beings inside of The Sims video game are going to start asking questions. Who am I? Who made us? What is this realm we're living in? What is this Big Bang? Is that when we turned on the game console? And then you have No Man's Sky, 80 quadrillion planets in a game that never ends, an unlimited number of life forms, and it fits on one DVD. It doesn't have AI yet. When they put AI into the next version, all of a sudden, that's an entire universe of conscious beings, living plants, living everything. So all of a sudden, we are already duplicating what's maybe been done to us. So when you look into this quantum realm and you look into the subatomic world and you see that we're vastly empty space mm -hmm. um, and you look at, you know, look at it through the lens of spirituality as well. What, I guess, yes, any more insights that you're gleaning from uh, the nature of who we are and how we can operate and realize our, the true nature of ourselves um, through the insights that we garner from the understanding? Yeah, well, the, what's interesting about quantum physics and theoretical physics, in my opinion, some people want to keep it separate, but it actually, it actually goes together with spirituality. It goes together with philosophy. When you're talking about spiritual concepts, those spiritual concepts, which were all de uh, imbued with divine spiritual energy inside of us, that is directly linked intrinsically to the quantum mechanics and the theoretical physics because... The theoretical physics, the quantum mechanics, supersymmetry, all those things really explain what's happening behind the veil that we can't see. Spirituality is an unseen thing. And so, but we know through our efforts of exercising it that real results happen. So how are real results happening in a three-dimensional world where we have the illusion of solidity? What it is is that the spirituality and the divine nature of it is really operating behind the scenes based on the subatomic world. So, okay, let's break a couple of these things down and slow down a little bit. <laughs> the illusion of solidity. Yeah. I think, you know, maybe for the listeners of this podcast, that's not such a crazy foreign idea, but to the mass consciousness, that's definitely like, what do you, what the heck do you mean, Billy? So can you break that down a little bit? When, <laughs> sure. when you say things aren't actually physically solid, what do you, what do you mean? Well, we know through many experiments, one of the most famous being the double slit experiment, that uh, particles actually make a decision. So we know that photons or even electrons, when shot through a slit in this microscopic box, make a decision to become a wave form, a wave of potentials. It shoots out, it becomes a wave of light and potential outcomes until we look at it. Once we look at it, put a camera in there to see what's happening with these particles as they go through this slit to go to the back wall, all of a sudden we realize they collapse themselves back into digital bits of information. So what is solidity? What is solid matter? Solid matter is a wave of potentials that are slowed down to give the illusion of solidity. And what's interesting is it gets even deeper. Through this experiment, we discover something really spooky. When you are not home, your house exists as a wave of potentials. It's not even there. It's a wave of potentials. It collapses back into your house when you come around the corner and you actually physically observe it. Why does it always collapse into the same structure? Because every atom is in a particular format laid around to create this design, this, this blueprint. So when it becomes a wave of potentials, when you're not looking and it collapses back, it always collapses back into the same frequency, which gives you the illusion of this house. Everything is, is actually in, uh, empty, like you talked about, empty space. So if I want to touch this microphone, the only thing stopping my hand from going through the microphone is the electromagnetic field and the electrons orbiting the atoms in my fingers repelling the electrons orbiting the atoms in the microphone. You never touch the microphone. I'm not touching it. The illusion is I'm touching it. This is repulsion, electromagnetic repulsion going on. We don't touch anything. This entire realm is illusory. As the ancient aboriginals and many other ancient cultures have said, this is the dream world that we're living in. 
So there's the apparent reality that we see with our eyes where things look really real. This, the, the five senses that we have create this experience that is very enchanting and allows us for the purpose of survival and to relate with the world and to connect in the world. You know, we're having Donald Hoffman back on in a, in a couple um, episodes from when this will go live. And our last conversation, you know, we talked about how local realism being proved false and won a Nobel Prize for it in the past few years. Uh, science really is coming to understand what you're speaking to here and what ancient wisdom traditions have known for millennia and have spoken to this. It doesn't negate that we are having a real experience that serves a purpose, right. but the the reality of it is that what we're seeing is not how existentially it's objectively happening. True. And so this has a lot of implications, I feel like, in how we relate with ourselves, with other people, with the world, um, our ability to recognize the impermanence of life and to not cling as hard onto things yeah. and not suffer as much. Mm -hmm. And so when when you're looking at local realism not being true, when you're looking at you know uh, the things that you were mentioning, how does consciousness play into this? Because you know, it's coming more and more up to the surface conversations around the possibility of consciousness being fundamental and not simply merely a um, emergent property out of unconscious complexity of our neuronal structure. Right. So what, yeah, so what do you think about the possibility of consciousness and how it intercorrelates with all this? I believe that based on my research and, and some of the research of others is that the brain, the human brain doesn't create consciousness, it downloads it. And I believe there's a constant stream of consciousness coming into each and every sentient being and every soul that exists throughout the entire universe, even the multiverse. That there's only one actual radio station that's broadcasting this frequency. I'm 99.1, you're 99.2, so forth and so on. And so we're picking up a, a point number of the frequency. So your avatar body is attuned to pick up dot. Two, I'm dot one, for example, right? Hypothetically. So I'm picking up a specific frequency that my body is attuned to, to allow my spirit energy, which is still yours, still together, but just slightly off frequency to inhabit it. Now, why is this? I believe that the universe itself has is imbued with divine energy that has split itself into Googles of entities to, so it can experience itself subjectively through many different life forms. Uh, not even just life forms, but even as atoms in this microphone, because the atoms in this microphone have electrons, and those electrons make conscious decisions based on observation. So that means even the atoms in this microphone are conscious, which means that everything is actually conscious. So this entire realm, to me, is a data collection proving ground where our souls are here to experience this realm, to collect information and send it back to the source. And if you look at the as above, so below aspect from the hermetic principles, what we're talking about is look at your mind. Your mind is encased in complete darkness, your brain, right? Your brain is in complete darkness. It knows nothing, but it has friends. It's sensory perception system, tasting, hearing, touching, smelling, feeling, right? And so it says to his friends, hey, I need to understand what's going on outside. Can you collect some information? So the friends go out, they touch, they smell, they taste, they listen, they see. And what they do is they collect data. Now the friends... The friends, they can't understand the data they're collecting. They can collect the data, but they can only transmit an electromagnetic frequency via the nervous system back to the brain. The brain takes that data that's encoded on that, that nervous uh, system and de-encodes it and actually projects a hologram as to what's going on outside. And then we navigate through this realm based on a holographic projection on collected data. Now, you scale it up from the micro to the macro, the universal consciousness may be doing the same exact thing. It may be utilizing us as portals to be able to collect information. What is it like to be Billy Carson? What is it like to travel uh, an hour away from a, from a hotel and sit and do a podcast to talk about contemplating what the universe is all about, you know, and all these incredible things? What is it like to travel to Egypt with you and, and experience the Great Pyramid and all these things and meditations and all these incredible things? And so it's like it's trying to collect information so that it can learn just like we're learning. It's the same thing, micro to macro, as above, so below. I believe that's exactly what's happening.